Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be going over one of the things you can do with the Edgar API for SEC filings. In this particular video, I'll be going over how to retrieve all filing values for a specific ticker. So what we're gonna end up doing is just pass in a ticker. It's gonna look up the CIK number and it'll retrieve all available values and all the filings that are publicly available on the SEC website. So one of the requirements for using this API is we need to assign a user agent. They want us to basically sign every time we make a request. So what they're requiring is that we provide a company website along with the email address and that'll get passed along in our get request. So go ahead and enter your own company website and your email address in this field here. And the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to read in a list from the SEC website, which provides all the company tickers and CIK codes. So I'm going to read that in. I'm going to turn this into a data frame. Now, if we take a look at that data frame, we have approximately 12,000 different entries. So this first column that contains the CIK string is incomplete as CIK numbers have to have 10 digits in order for us to make requests. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill each CIK number with zeros in order for us to have 10 digits here. So that's what I'll be doing in the next line. So I'll go ahead and run this block. I'm going to make sure this table is a data frame. And if we take a look at info now, so now we have the complete CIK numbers here, and this is the number I'll be using to get the filings. So I'll look up a ticker and then just return the CIK number for any ticker that we want. And in order to do so, I have built a function, which is this get CIK function. So if we open that up, I'm just going to subset that table that matches the ticker we are requesting and return the CIK number. So I'm going to go ahead and run this line. This very next function is the wrapper we will be using to get requests from the SEC. So if we open this function up, the first thing I'll be doing is returning that CIK number for the ticker we pass in. So this is the actual get request. I'm going to pass in this URL and pass in that CIK number. And as headers, I'm just going to pass in the user agent and this accept encoding. After we make that request, I'm going to extract the content as text. So I'll go over an example. I'm just going to assign Apple as the ticker. I'm going to run this. So if we take a look at data raw, so here we get a nice list of three elements, but what I want to focus on is the facts, which contains all the values we need. So if we open these up, we see that this one has the public float and what looks to be the common shares outstanding. If we open this up, these are grouped by type. So say we want all the accounts payable, we get a label, a description and the units. And inside the units, it tells us that this is in USD. This is where the actual values are stored. So for this first element, we get the end date, the actual value, the access number for the filing, the fiscal year, the fiscal quarter, what form this is on, which is the 10Q, which was filed in 2009. And it tells us what frame this is for. So it looks like this was for the 2008 third quarter. So within the function we are in, I'm going to go ahead and extract everything that's in this list and return it as an actual table. So let's go back to our script. So I actually group these by type. So the first type is this descriptive, which contains the public flow and the common shares outstanding. I'm going to go ahead and use the length to get everything that's inside that list, do a bit of formatting and delete duplicates. I'm going to add the ticker as a column so that we know what company this is for. And then I'm going to use our bind list to get everything together. Some companies don't provide that. So that's why I use this if else. So a bit of error proofing, it'll only pull this if the length is greater than or equal to one. The next section will get some more facts. And I believe these are just miscellaneous things. So we repeat the process here by grouping everything inside that list and returning that as a data frame. The next section is the SRT section. The API doesn't provide what this actually means, but if you're wondering, you could go to this link for the API. It just says that they use non-custom taxonomy, and these are the sections that they provide, DEI, the SRT, and also the US GAAP. For non-US companies, you will need to add a section for IFRS. So again, we repeat the process by just extracting everything that's inside that particular list if it's available. But most companies will have this US gap, which contains all the values. And after we extract everything, I'm just going to reorder here. And after everything is said and done, I'm just going to rbind fill all the lists we extracted. And I'm going to be returning that as a data frame. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this function. Go ahead and run it. And here I'm just going to test the function. So we'll get all the data for Tesla. 
And if we open up that data frame, this is what our table looks like. So for Tesla, we have approximately 7,800 different entries. I believe the rows that don't have a start date come from the balance sheet. So this is when the quarter actually ended. The value for that particular row, which would be in this column called description, the filing number, the fiscal year, the fiscal quarter, the form where this value came from, when it was actually filed, the frame which contains the quarter and the year for the filing. Sometimes they don't provide that. Again, the description. And if you scroll to the right, the last column is just our ticker name. So I left that in there in case you want to call multiple tickers. You can just group this data and then just access it as needed. So again, very straightforward, guys. You can practically pull all the data for all the 12,000 different tickers. One thing I did notice is that there are some gaps. So for example, in this description where we have the accounts and notes receivable net, you see that we have 2020, 2021, but we don't have anything prior to that. It well may be that they changed the description name, so it might be under something else. So you have to look that up manually under the SEC filings. But other than that, it'll grab everything that's available for that particular ticker. So this concludes the video, guys. In the next video, I'll show you guys some of the other things we can do with this API. I'll go ahead and provide the link down in the description area where you can find the script. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.